Hi, beautiful. Hey. How are you? Thank you so much. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. To another, and now we're engaged to be married. Do we have any pictures of anything? This is Panina Tournay. I love this job. Oh my god. I don't want a ball gown. I do not like the way they look on me. In this situation. <laughs> That's as much as you're gonna get from us. Pushing, but not beating. Okay. What's comfortable for you price-wise? Probably around three thousand dollars. Number three, Ebony Standback. Ebony, a bride-to-be, set out on a quest to find her ideal wedding dress in the city of Kleinfeld. With her mother and her two closest friends by her side, they ventured inside a renowned store full of optimism. A ticking. So I need to find a dress immediately today. The budget is about $3,500. Okay. Are you ready to try on? Yes. Okay, you laced. This is like a really lucky find. Oh my God, Debbie, wow. you're a lifesaver. Time was running out and the wedding was drawing near. The work was assigned to Debbie, a seasoned consultant. Away from conventional ball gowns, Ebony wanted an outfit that expressed her personal flair. She had set aside $3,500 for an ivory gown. Randy and Debbie combed over the scant inventory for hours. They discovered a dress, but Ebony was not won over by it. They carried on looking. They searched the racks once again, unfazed, and discovered a dress that had a dreamlike feel. Ebony's need for beauty was satiated, but she felt unconnected. As the clock ticked down, Randy offered a last-ditch solution that needed modifications. The moment Ebony put it on changed her forever. But I think I'm gonna see what everybody else thinks. What do we think? Uh, you know what? what? I'm not crazy about the ruffles. Wah, wah. And I think it needs to be a little high. Bling that you like. Mm -hmm. That is true. But I hate it. Okay, so this has the... I'm extremely nervous and I have no idea what we... She exuded confidence and attractiveness, and the clothing captured her spirit. The Kleinfeld personnel guaranteed that the dress will arrive in time for the wedding. They put in a lot of effort to hasten the changes. Ebony wore the dress that had captured her heart on her wedding day. As she made her way down the aisle, she exuded happiness and magic. Knowing they had fulfilled Ebony's wishes, Debbie, Randy, and the Kleinfeld team rejoiced in their success. Ebony began a new chapter of her life with her soulmate while crying with delight. She will always be appreciative of the perseverance and knowledge of the Kleinfeld family. Love. That's the one. That's, That's the one. beautiful. Yes. Oh, that looks like it. That means she waited three years to shop for a wedding dress. Now you wanted to pull out a dress in three months? Of course. Yes. <laughs> what a relief. We can get the dress for Ebony in time for the wedding. So, Ebony, are we through? Thank you so much, Debbie. You are so welcome. Number two, Elise Sears. The time was running out for Louisiana's dazzling bride to be, Elise Sears. She felt pressure to locate the ideal dress because she had four months till her wedding. With the help of her mother Julia, Brittany, and Tosha, two of her closest friends, Elise set out to find the dress of her dreams. Elise had always imagined herself in a stunning mermaid gown that highlighted her curves and exuded class. Lots of tool. How do you envision Elise? Princess. Princess? Ball Swing gown. Print. Oh, Ball wait gown. a second. That'll make me look like I'm a pageant girl. Is there a price point that we want to respect? Um, I want to say under 10000 Yes, it is. Oh, here it is. Oh, wow. Wow. Wait a minute. Okay, how much is this? I don't know. 15. Julia, her mother, on the other hand, had her own goals. She believed that because of her financial support, she was entitled to a significant voice in the dress choosing process and yearned to seem like a princess in a spectacular ball gown. Their committed consultant Debbie joined forces with Randy, an authority on bridal fashion, in order to realize Elise's idea. In search of the elusive Panina Tournay gown that Elise had fallen in love with, they perused wedding shops and boutiques. They eventually found the sought-after dress, but their happiness was fleeting since they saw how much it cost. A stunning $15,700. Despite the cost, Elise had the bravery to try the dress on in the hopes that its beauty would convince her friends to join her. 
A feeling of enchantment overcame her as she put on the robe. It was as though the clothing had been made just for her. Elise's pulse pounded with anticipation, but her joy was met with dissatisfaction. Elise was devastated when Tosha, who is always honest, declared her obvious distaste for the garment. I hate it. Oh! I don't think I've ever heard anybody say that. This was her favorite, so she wanted to try it on. No one likes this dress. I am very hurt and very upset. Julia also struggled to get excited about the mermaid look because she yearned for the opulence of a ball gown. Her skepticism was only increased by the outrageous price, which drove her to abruptly alter her mind. Elise was devastated and decided to look for another solution after returning the outfit. Her mother found a stunning ball gown fit for a queen that precisely captured her own vision. But at a startling $5,000 over Elise's budget, this outfit was out of reach. She reluctantly accepted the idea that it was not meant to be. Elise kept looking, but no outfit she found after the first one won her loved ones over. She tried on a second piece by Mark Zanino, a stunning ball gown with a subtle peach color, which was priced at a more affordable $9,000. Trouble. I try on this dress for my mom. I know that it's just what she wants. I just feel like I wore something. Yeah, I'm a okay. little nervous. Everything about I it is beautiful. Surprised. The color. Yeah. Everyone loves this dress. Though Elise's heart did not resonate with the color, Julia's eyes twinkled with delight as she imagined her baby shining in this gown. With only four months left until her special day, she reluctantly said goodbye to yet another outfit leaving her without any. She looked at one more dress from the Mark Zanino line with a $9,900 price tag. When Elise looked in the mirror, she saw herself dressed in a gown that radiated classic elegance. She had a connection to this clothing, but her mother and pal weren't persuaded. Kid, I like it. Wow factor is still lacking. What? I think it's your wedding and you need to pick a dress that you love. Elise took the difficult choice to leave the store without a wedding dress after becoming overburdened by the lack of agreement and the gravity of her upcoming nuptials. Elise felt a great deal of disappointment as she walked out into the busy streets. The arduous effort of choosing the ideal gown seemed insurmountable as time was slipping away, but she resisted giving in to hopelessness. Elise made a commitment to carry out her ambition and determined to keep looking, relying on the love that had initially brought her and her fiancé together for support. Number 1. Jennifer Bolano The acclaimed director of communications for the Pittsburgh Penguins ice hockey team, Jennifer, set out on her own search for the wedding dress of her dreams in the center of Kleinfeld amid a frenzy of bridal enthusiasm. She entered the upscale boutique accompanied by her adoring parents, her godmother, and her ever-supportive best friend, relishing in the thought that even the Penguins team would have been there if it weren't for a crucial game against the Rangers. Jennifer had extravagant plans for her wedding. The marriage would be celebrated lavishly in the prestigious Carnegie Music Hall after the ceremony, which would take place within the beautiful walls of a Pittsburgh cathedral. I'm the director of communications for the Pittsburgh Penguins, and tonight we have a hockey game against the New York Rangers. How are you? Simple, but I think expensive. I know nothing about picking out. The event's blatant grandeur was in keeping with her intense love for Eric Ridgely, her fiancé of 10 hectic months. Jennifer knew she had found her soul match in Eric the moment she first laid eyes on him. Finding a dress that would appeal to Jennifer was the current task. She yearned for a figure that highlighted her waist with a belt-like design, an air of refinement appropriate to her delicate frame. Debbie, the always inventive consultant, set out to find the ideal dress for the upcoming bride with a $3,000 budget in mind. The necessity to leave Kleinfeld quickly, meanwhile, in order to make sure Jennifer and the Penguins coach would return in time for the important game, was an urgent concern. Debbie meticulously chose a $2,400 Dennis Basso gown that she thought may satisfy Jennifer's desires. 
However, Jennifer's dissatisfaction was apparent as soon as she put on the outfit. It simply didn't fit her vision, it seemed to be too voluminous. Her crew mirrored her comments and showed concern in their faces. They agreed to carry on looking with a collective sigh, determined to find a garment that would truly capture Jennifer's character. Jennifer clearly rolled her eyes when Debbie reappeared with a different solution, unfazed by the setback. The style, in the opinion of her best friend, was out of date for the contemporary bride Jennifer had evolved into. They were under increasing strain and had little time because it was again another miss. Debbie quickly retraced her steps in an effort to find a different option that would win the bride's heart after sensing Jennifer's preference for something other than a ball gown. Then, in the thick of the commotion, she came across it. Okay, just one minute. Aww. You look so pretty. Yeah, it's like a beautiful angel. When I look at myself in the dress, I think that it's the dress. Yes. An amazing Dennis Basso design with a $3,100 price tag, just a little bit above Jennifer's price range. Jennifer changed into something otherworldly as soon as she put on the gown. This is the first time I genuinely feel like a bride, she exclaimed, her eyes glistening with excitement. Jennifer proudly strutted before her group to share her happiness, and they enthusiastically praised her radiant appearance. Her mother was overcome with emotion, her tears served as a reminder of the wonderful beauty her daughter radiated. Debbie, the ever-vigilant consultant, placed a beautiful veil on Jennifer's head and cried yes to the dress with exuberant joy. That's all for this video, folks. See you next time.